Okay. So the first thing we do is we find F prime. All right, so we get X squared plus 5X minus 6, right? Okay, then we find our critical numbers. So when we factor, we get X plus 6, X minus 1. So X is negative 6 and 1. How did y'all do so far? Perfect. Excellent. Okay, to make your sign line, so you have negative 6 and 1. This is an F prime sign line. And here's a little word of advice, because over the next couple weeks, you're going to have sign lines for F, sign lines for F prime, and sign lines for F double prime. And you're going to be like, your papers are going to be so full of sign lines, you're going to get them all mixed up, right? So here's my word of advice. Number one, you should always label what the sign line is for, just so you've got it there, right? And then a reminder, wherever you found these numbers, that's the function you should be plugging into to get your signs. So if I got the numbers negative 6 and 1 by setting my derivative equal to 0, that's where I should be plugging in to get my signs. This is a first derivative sign line. I don't care about the signs of the function. I want the signs of the slope, right? Okay, good. Okay. So if I pick like negative 10 and I plug in, it's always faster to plug into your factors. You get a negative times a negative, so it's positive. Pick 0, positive, negative, negative, and then 10 is positive, positive, positive. Now, here's where I do a little something extra. When I, and you don't have to do this, but when I make my sign line, wherever my first derivative is positive, underneath I draw a little up arrow. Ooh, that's smart. Mm -hmm. And then whenever my first derivative is negative, I draw a little down arrow. Not only does this help remind me that the function is increasing, decreasing, increasing, but if you look carefully at negative 6, I can tell just by looking at it that there is a relative max because it visually looks like the top of a hill, right? And then at 1, I know there's a relative min because it looks like the bottom of it. So that's just something I've always done, and it's helpful for me. I'm a very visual kind of person. So here we go. Here's our answers. So f of x is ink on what interval or intervals? Negative infinity to negative 6. Union 1 to infinity. Why? Because f prime of x is greater than 0. By the way, there are no pronouns in this class. If you write it, you, you're not going to get credit. Okay? If you say because it is greater than zero, there is no credit. No pronouns. All right? Okay. F of x is decreasing on what interval? Negative 6 to 1. Negative 6 to 1. Because why? Uh, F prime of x is less than 0. Lovely. Any questions on that? All right. We have a relative max. Relative max occurs at the ordered pair negative 6 comma something because f prime changes from positive to negative and a relative min occurs at 1 comma something because f prime changes from negative to positive. Now, this is a no calculator unit. Where do you find the y values to put in with these ordered pairs? The original, the original function. We don't want slopes. If I plugged them into my derivative, they'd be 0 because that's where we, how we found them in the first place, right? So we don't want slopes, we want the y values. This is a tough one to plug numbers in without a calculator. If you are taking a regular test or an AP exam, more often than not, they're just going to ask you for the x values. They're not going to ask you for the ordered pairs. But for right now, since we're doing the full shebang, we might as well write down the ordered pairs, but I'm just going to tell you that at negative 6, the function is 51. And at 1, the function value is negative 6.167.
Wait, so on the AP test, do they take away and give you calculators? You on saying? the AP exam, there are two sections that are calculator and two sections that are no calculator. And the calculator sections are larger than the no, or the no calc sections are larger than the calculator so they section. Like take away your calculator. You just put them away, oh, and then so get mean. them back out. That's why you got to be in the cafeteria in the way way back. Oh, bro, the you're in the gym. Oh, that's for the way way back. back. Yeah. In the no, gym in the way way corner. You have a side seat. They never check that. So you got to have like a last last name that starts with like an X or a Z. Danny. Just like take the test in the way room. Yeah. They don't check me. I've cheated on every single AP. Test. You know this is being recorded, right? Yeah, I took out my book and I started flipping through, and I was like, all right, that's the answer to that, and then I just did it all in the time. That's pretty good. My problem is price. I'm pretty sure they check. All right, so my problem is price. Nah, 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 nah. Nah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, here we go. F of x. What rule are we going to have to use for f prime? Quotient. Quotient rule, right? So for the sake of time, I'm going to help you out. Actually, I want you guys to take 30 seconds and just do your quotient rule. But it's not that even matter? I don't know. Bam, done. <laughs> I mean, the denominator is x minus 3 squared. Are you sure? I don't think it is. I'm pretty positive. Oh, uh, you cracked me up and stuff. Thanks, bud. How'd you do on your setup? That's what I got. Good. You must be correct then. All right. Combining like terms, when you put everything together, you get negative 17 over x minus 3 squared. What is the only critical number for this function? 3. x equals 3, right? And that's where the derivative is undefined. So if we were to make a sine line for this function, this is our f prime sine line, if I plug a 0 in, what do I get? Positive or negative? Negative. You can plug in a 0. Negative. 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 Okay. Undefined. It's three it's squared, negative. which equals nine. Yeah. If I plug in a zero, I get negative seventeen over nine, over nine oh, which yeah. is negative. It's negative. negative. <laughs> that was you. It's same positive. It's only undefined at three. It's not undefined to the left of three or the right of three. Right? Okay. If I plug in a ten. Positive. Negative. Positive. Negative. Negative. Because be negative. Why is it so hard? Negative. There's always going to be a positive. The bottom is always squared. positive. The top is always negative. This function is always negative. So there's right? no relative max or minimum. Okay. Now here's the thing. When you write your answer, you're going to write f of x is increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Here's the trick. If you put negative infinity to infinity, you're going to be wrong. Ooh. You have to put negative, negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity. Always break it up because then you're safe. If you, if, you don't, if you don't break it up, sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. If you break it up, you're always okay. Decreasing on that interval because f prime is less than 0. Why can't you include the 3? Because the original function is a vertical asymptote there. It's not even defined, so it can't be increasing at 3, right? Okay, so be very careful that you always break it up. There is no interval where it's increasing. There's no relative max. There's no relative min. Now, we have like 30 seconds left, and I want to show you something really quickly if there's time. All right. That's not what I wanted to show you. So cute. Is it a honey crisp apple? Yeah. All right. What I have right here is a graph 
for the first example of the original function and its derivative. A function and its derivative, the graphs will never look alike. They're always one degree off, right? So they can never look alike. So I want you to just notice something really quickly. If you remember the original function, we had a max at negative 6 and a min at 1. The function is increasing when the derivative is positive. That does not mean the function is increasing when the derivative is increasing. Positive does not mean increasing. Positive means above the x-axis. It means if I plugged in a number, would I get a positive answer, right? So this derivative is positive to here, so the function is increasing. Then it's zero. We have a max. Then it switches to negative. For the whole time that the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing, right? Then the derivative goes positive again, so the function is increasing. Never confuse positive with increasing, right? A derivative can be positive even if it's decreasing. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, so a positive derivative means an increasing function, not an increasing derivative increasing function. Positive means increasing function. All right, slight subtle difference. So anyway, graph of the derivative, graph of the function, that might come up a tiny bit in one or two of your homework problems today. All right, so. That is that. Tomorrow, we're going to...